welcome to the Writing Momentum Podcast. I'm Christopher Maselli, and I'm here with my wife, Gina. Gina, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm so hey. glad to be here. Wait a second. There is someone else in the room. Who I is it? know. We're so excited to have our good friend, Renee Gutteridge, here. She is coming on to answer some questions. It's the first Writing Momentum interview that we're going to be doing, and we're just thrilled she's here. Hey, that's momentous. How are you doing today, Renee? I'm doing a fantastic. I mean, this is so much fun. This is breaking up like the monotony of my day, just yes. out with friends. So love that's it. Right. That's cool. Now you're you're coming from Oklahoma. This is also our first like intercontinental, is that right the right word? <laughs> Podcast, because we're talking over the miles, which is kind of cool. Well, yes, that's so fun that we are in the technological age that we can communicate via whatever we're communicating over. I guess right. the internet. <laughs> All right. So, Gina, I know you've got some questions prepared that you want to ask Renee because you are like the interview queen. So you, you got to get us started. Well, this is so cool for me because even though Renee and I have known each other for a while, I I haven't necessarily heard her story of how she got started in writing. So Renee, tell us about your journey to becoming a professional full-time writer. Where did it start? Well, it it started very young. Um, I would give credit to my mom for forcing me to go to the library over the summers you know, my, my friends were going to the pool and whitewater and I was going to the library where we were earning like the Dairy Queen cones. I don't know if you guys got <laughs> for every 10 books you read, you got a Dairy Queen ice cream cone. Um, but I, that, that began my love for books and stories, uh, more specifically, um, and then it, I was just that kid that wrote, you know, I wrote all the time and created stories. Uh, my parents bought me an Apple computer early on when they were really pretty brand new and I wrote stories on those. And so I just, uh, I just kept going, you know, I didn't, it never occurred to me to stop or that it was silly or that I shouldn't, shouldn't keep doing it. However, uh, it didn't, really occurred to me to do it for a living until I got to college. And I had a professor tell me, uh, hey, you, you know, you're pretty good at this. Uh, have you thought about doing this? And uh, that was about the time I was, I was going to switch my major from broadcast journalism to, <laughs> this is so silly to even <laughs> say it out loud, but uh, I basically was all into going into the FBI. And oh, yeah. Uh, you know, you have to see me in person to know what a hilarious joke that is. But I do like investigations and um, and I think I had a mind for it. But God was thinking that's probably not a good choice. So he intervened. And uh, from there, I just began studying it seriously. Uh, you know, how do you really get published? And I kept writing, um, and actually in college, I was studying screenwriting, not uh, fiction writing. And uh, my last semester in college, my writing professor said, hey, why don't you try writing fiction? And I was not that interested in it. It was so many words, uh, but I, I did it and then uh, got interested in publishing books and uh, went to writers' conferences, talked to authors, got on the internet, studied how to do it, and just started that journey on trying to get published. So I was published at the age of 26. My first novel, Ghost Rider, came out then and just kept going. Um, yeah, it certainly kept going because now you have uh, 24 novels, right? And you are an award-winning author. You've got one of your novels has turned into a Hallmark movie. You've written multiple screenplays and your latest family camp is in theaters now, right? That's right. It opens today. Um, wow, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a comedy. It's a comedy for the whole family. That's right. Family-friendly comedy. We're really excited about it. It's in 900 theaters across the United States. Wow. That is so exciting. So this really is a momentous day. Not only are you on Writing Momentum podcast <laughs> for the first time, but... 
your family camp movie, the movie family camp is in. So, Hey, it's a, it's a great day already. So it is. It is. It's, you know, it's so funny because it's such a huge day. Um, and, and also, but also I'm working at my desk, right? Like (laughs) it's so, you know, that the, the movie is going and it's going to go do its thing. We've celebrated with uh, the premiere and the, and the Oklahoma screening. So, you know, I've, I've gotten to see it, but, um, now everybody else gets to see it. So I've been getting texts today and a lot of fun things. Um, people are letting me know that they liked it. So, Well, and I think that's one of the things about writing that people have to be prepared for when they want to do this is that the work happens a long time before you see the finished product that comes out. So when did you write Family Camp? When when were you working on that project? So we were writing that around uh, begin, uh, I think it's 2018 um, or finished through 2019. Um, and then COVID hit. So that was the delay in filming. Um, but we were able to film in 2020. So So that's, you're talking four or five years, five years, right? Yeah. It's from, from the start to, to when it's actually coming out. And that's shorter from what I have learned about screenwriting. That's actually shorter than, um, than most screenwriting, you know, most scripts get from the point that they're written to the point that they're actually produced and released. I know I learned that that can be years. It can be. Uh, We had, you know, a situation, uh, this is a movie uh, through the Skit Guys, Skit Guys Studios. So the Skit Guys already have a huge following and so when uh, it was time for us to, we believe, m- make a movie, um, the pieces fell into place. And uh, much of that is because they had a huge following and um, it was easy to imagine for studios that people would come see this movie. So right. it's a little different than if I were to write a movie on my own and then try to sell it to a major studio that, you know, certainly can take years and years and years and years. Um, so this is a different, a little different situation where I'm a writer that comes into a group of people that are already established and works within their company to get the movie made. It's, it is interesting though, how long some things like this can take, because I think, um, I, I think a lot of writers who are starting off today, uh, they're used to the idea that, oh, if they have an idea and they want to write about something, they can type it out on a blog, hit publish, and it's out there for the world to see, right? I mean, we can even self-publish books that once we finish writing them, we hit a few buttons on Amazon and we have a self-published book available for the world instantly. And yet uh, it's sometimes, uh, especially when there's other companies involved in that, it can take a lot longer because I know with, you know, novel writing, it was always like that too. If you had to go through a traditional publisher, it's not something that would happen in a couple months. It would some, it's something that would happen a couple in over a couple of years. And that's just the publishing process, you know, in addition to the writing process, right? Yes, that's exactly right. And, and I've always been traditionally published. Um, Self-publishing wasn't really even an option when I started. Um, but I, I, as long and arduous as it can be, I also really believe in the process of traditional publishing because it does put you through the fire. It does put your work through the fire, you know, by the time it gets to the place that, you know, either in terms of family camp or any other movie where you're spending a lot of money or the book publishing process where you're the company spending a lot of money betting on your product, uh, it better have gone through a lot of hands and be, been scrutinized. And you know, by the time it comes out, it is really the very, very, very best it can be. And those, those long stretches of working on that, working on that, working on that, I mean, family camp, I think I counted, I don't know, upwards of about 20 drafts of that on my computer. Um, and wow. it's the same for novels too. I mean, those go through so many drafts, just making it better and better and better, which then in turn makes you a better writer. I learn every time I work on a project and I've worked on besides my novels and a, a countless number of scripts and other projects, 
uh, I learn and I learn and I learn and I learn. I get better and better, um, which is extremely fun. I think mm-hmm. that's the fun part of writing is you're never going to get there, right? You're never <laughs> right. going to be like, yep, I've, I finally made it. I'm the best. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is funny because I think, I think a lot of writers have been drawn to the self-publishing world because they don't want to have all the red tape and they don't want to have people telling them how they need to change their books. You know, there's a story I tell about one of my books uh, when I first wrote it that I submitted to the publisher and they came back and said, yes, we love this, but we want you to change who the main characters are and what the plot is, right? And so I had to rewrite like the whole thing. And that's not something that would have happened in a self-publishing world. I never would have had those checks and balances and I wouldn't have had a marketing department looking and making sure that I was including certain things and all that, which can be a downside sometimes if, if it you know, because it can change your work a bit, but it really can be a good checks and balances to make sure that it, you do have something that is sellable and that reaches maybe a broader audience. I mean, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think that, I mean, well, first of all, if you go through traditional publishing, you have a lot of war stories that are really fun to tell. <laughs> I mean, I have so many rejection stories that are just amazing. Um, but it also <laughs> makes you understand you're climbing this huge mountain. And every time you get a little further up, it's, it's immensely satisfying, you know, that you have, you have passed the test and your work has passed the test through editors and salespeople and marketing people and, you know, anybody else that has a voice into it. Um, and you, you know, you get to this place where all of a sudden you've passed all the tests and then it's there and you know when it's going out to the public that you couldn't have worked any harder on it. And the people, you know, the other thing about it is, is in, in both sides of screenwriting and fiction writing, there are extremely talented people behind the scene who are working to make your work better. And, yeah. you know, sometimes when you're going into writing, you're sort of fearing the editor, right? You're like, oh my gosh, you know, they're going to rip my book apart and all this. And I just always encourage people, I promise you, your editor is going to be your best friend. Your editor is the one who is going to make sure that you don't put your book out, you know, half naked or whatever that, you know, you've got your copy editor and your line editor and your macro editor and all of the people who are working on your behalf to make you look really good. So I would say you you shouldn't fear the editor. They're going to be a good friend. Yeah, it's in their best interest yeah. to make sure that your book succeeds, right? I mean, they're 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 not your enemy. They're they're trying yeah. to help you get that published, and they and they want it to succeed because it it helps everyone along the way. Absolutely, it's it's. I've worked. I've had the pleasure of working with some of the best editors in the business, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. They have taught me so much um, that I am where I am today because of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So now you're also a writing coach though, too, right? You help other writers in your coaching. So Mm -hmm. how, how do you find when you're on that side of the equation that things work? Because you're, in, in that case, it's like, you're the editor. Well, I am the editor, but I'm also, uh, I would say a little more than that or a little different role because I'm, I'm trying to bring out the writer. And, and oftentimes when people are hiring a writing coach, they're, they're still learning their voice and their strength. Like what's my, what, what am I good at? What am I bringing to the page that other writers Mm -hmm. aren't? Yeah. And I can see that more than they can see it. It's very easy to just kind of get in the weeds when in your own writing and uh, not necessarily be able to see it, it, where your strengths are. So uh, although I am pointing out the weaknesses, I'm also working hard to draw out the strengths and point out to the writers, hey, you may not know this, but you're really great at these really quippy pieces of dialogue, or you're really great at 
stringing me along and then just stabbing me in the heart with emotion <laughs> or whatever, you know, and, and they begin to see like, wow, I am good at this. And you start seeing them implement that into their writing. And uh, it's just very fun to watch a writer blossom that way. And then eventually, you know, I am not an editor. I, I wouldn't uh, ever say that I have that talent. So, you know, eventually their book would go on to be edited by a real editor. Uh, but uh, in the process, I can do some, you know, types of editing. But yeah, I guess it de depends on how you define editor, right? Because when, when I think editor, I, I'm thinking of someone who's helping you overall, like a content editor, get from point A to point B. But there are different kinds of editors, too, that help with all those minute details. Mm -hmm. And I and a lot of the time, the, the writer is the one that is you know, pushing along the content and then I'm helping them shape and think through, okay, if you do this here, what are you going to do there and mm -hmm. let them think through all of this? Because many times the people who hire me have never actually written a full book. And so they began to see how many plates are actually spinning <laughs> when you're right. writing a book <laughs> and there's a lot of them. So that I just help them keep those spinning you know, plates going and point them out as we go. Well, Renee, you know, you are so good at, I know I've heard you speak at writers conventions and at writer con, especially um, I've heard you speak at in Oklahoma city. Um, but what's something that you like to share with newcomers that something that they don't realize when they're thinking I think I want to do this. I want to write a book or I've always wanted to write a book. We hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to write a book and, and they want to get into that world. What's something that you like to share with them about that? Well, my number one piece of advice has always been big, but in chair, you know, it <laughs> is a, you have to sit and you have to write and people realize very quickly whether they actually want to be a writer or not, um, because it does take an enormous amount of time by yourself, you and the white page, just writing and either you plow through or yeah. you get freaked out by your own abilities and you abandon it. You know, uh, I also have to really um, encourage people to, I think people think that I sit down and I write my first draft of my book and it's brilliant. Uh, the first draft of my books and scripts are train wrecks. And uh, wait, what? Yes. That, I mean, <laughs> I don't believe it. I know it. I do not come up with all of the clever twists and turns in the first draft. Um, it, it's typically, you know, a bad first draft. And, but I have to get something on paper. You have to sit down and you have to get something on paper. And people really get inside their own heads and begin to talk themselves out of it just because it's messy. So those are the two, two big things people have to overcome. They have to sit down and then they have to stay there despite how messy the draft is. Yeah, well, and I, I think there's, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I think there's a point at which, and I'm really, I'm working on a project and, and full disclosure, I'm working with Renee right now on a project. She is my writing coach. I'm working on my first novel. So as she's talking, I'm like, yeah, there's the button chair thing of just because novels are not easy. They are, it's the toughest thing I've ever written and I've written books, but this is just on a whole nother whole nother level because there are the, all these spinning plates that you have to keep thinking about. But um, I'm just listening to her talk and I'm realizing um, many times she has said, just keep going, just make yourself a note, keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, so yeah. And, and it is a big old mess. <laughs> <laughs> a big old mess. And, it's a beautiful mess. But it, it, but I think the more you get into it, that's when the fun comes. There's a point at which it's it's a lot of work, but then there's the point at which it really it is like a muscle that you are working, and it becomes easier to do the exercise. You know, at first you're kind of you know, you're working to lift the five pounders and as you're going, it's like, okay, now, you know what, these 10 pounders don't feel so bad or these 15 pounders, dang, I've never done that before, you know, and you start to, it becomes 
more fun, the more you do it, but it, you cannot do it without the whole button chair thing and just slogging through the sludge of the first draft. (laughs) I mean, really? Well, that's a great analogy, Gina, because it really is, you know, we talk about how I know this is hard right now, but pretty soon it's going to be muscle memory and you're not going to have to think about, you know, even, even not necessarily you, but others I've worked with, you know, they, they don't exactly even know how to put dialogue in. So every time they're writing a chapter, they have to work so hard to remember how dialogue is formatted. Right. And once they get Mm -hmm. past that, they begin to, you know, have more and more fun because they're not having to remember these things. They're learning them and they're learning them and they're learning them. And that really takes working on a uh, manuscript every week. It's very mm-hmm. hard to write if you're not writing every week. If you're mm-hmm. putting three or four or five weeks between when you've last written your chapter, your that muscle memory is going to be lost. You know, yes. you're back to the five pound weights. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and I'm excited because um, we are looking in next month, we are going to begin something special. And just to let our listeners know, Renee has agreed to help us with this and to be a part of it. And that is with writing moments. We're going to begin them in June, 2022. And these are going to be, um, co-working sessions online where we're going to come together and, uh, for an hour, we are going to be writing together, but the first 10 to 15 minutes are going to be, um, are going to be mini teachings that either Chris or Renee or I are going to do. And then we're going to have about 45 minutes to 50 minutes of us just writing together. And so we're looking forward to that and just having our listeners be able to join us on that zoom call. Um, and I say zoom call. It may yeah, not yeah. be Zoom. It may be it, another it'll, format. It, it, so. It'll be like a Zoom call, but it, yeah, it's going to be really fun because we talk about, you know, when you're talking about having butt in chair and this muscle memory, this is the kind of thing we need to, to forge that muscle, muscle memory and make it happen. And so, yeah, we're going to be meeting on essentially a weekly basis and uh, we're going to be sitting down for an hour. We'll have a small teaching portion from one of the three of us. And then we're just going to start exercising those muscles and we're going to write together over Zoom. We're all going to put it on mute. We're not going to be talking at that point. And we're just going to be there accountable to each other. And so that'll be super, super fun. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. And then in the fourth week, what we're planning on doing is we're going to do the, um, the button chair writing moments (laughs) for three weeks. And then on the fourth week, we're going to open it up for a question and answer. And all three of us will be there and we will be taking questions throughout the month that any writers have. And then on that fourth week, we will be answering them. We'll also be again on a Zoom type call. We're not quite sure yet if we're going to use Zoom or we're going to use another media, another software, but it's going to be that same type of thing. And we will also have the chat open to have people ask questions and we will answer them. So That's our right. whole Q&A. purpose, yeah, Q&A, our whole purpose with this is just to help people make that momentum, start building that momentum on their writing, whatever it is. And it doesn't have to be a novel. It can be if you're wanting to start a blog and you just need to write it weekly, you want to release a blog every week, that can be what you're working on. It can be a nonfiction book. It can be your memoir. It can be uh, your, if you're wanting to set up your marketing machine, um, you can do that as well. So it, it isn't just about writing your novel. It can be about any type of writing that you're wanting to do. That's right. Well, Renee, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been a momentous occasion because you joined us family camps out now, and we're going to be doing more stuff in the future, which is going to be lots of fun. Well, thank you all for having me. I love hanging out with you guys. You're super fun. And um, I I love talking about writing. So this is a good day. (laughs) All right. Well, hey, if you enjoyed this podcast, please rate, review, subscribe, and share it with someone. Let them uh, hear what you've been uh, using to help give you writing momentum. And until next week, this is Chris, Gina, and Renee saying, may all your writing have momentum. Bye.